you know, planting corn into cereal rye, one of the things I think is you don't want your cereal rye to be planted super thick. You know, you don't want to be out there with a really, really thick stand. Um, you know, maybe, to, you know, our goals might be different than somebody else's, where if we want to graze, we want it a little bit thicker for more forage value. But if you're truly using it just as a cover crop, you know, and you know you're going to go to corn, maybe 30 to 40 pounds of seed is all you need. You know, I think that's probably a better approach. So for our farm, planting corn into cover crops, uh, there's a number of things that we do. And the first thing that we do is plan our cover crop mix accordingly. We don't want a high volume of rye ahead of our corn because our planter is not set up well to address that residue and the carbon penalty that might come from it ahead of a corn crop. And so in our mix, we might, we're still using rye, but we're using oats, spring barley, uh, a brassica as part of that mix, a legume as part of that mix. And a number of those species will winter kill and have less residue for us to deal with in the spring, especially living res residue to deal with in the spring ahead of corn. Yeah, as you look across the field right now, it just looks like this is a solid seeded field of rye. Uh, but as you, as you come over here, our rows, so we're looking east-west right here, but our rows are actually gonna go north-south in this field. And so as you start to look at the rows, what we've done is we're in a, in a controlled traffic uh, system, the way we're running it. So we have a guidance line that we use with the, with the um, harrow seeder in the fall. Uh, and then we use the same guidance line with our strip till machine where we band in our, our nitrogen and any other fertility we put on. And then we'll come back and use the same guidance line with the planter in the spring and plant on top of that same spot. And so what we've done, this, this is a perfect example here, is, is when we come through with the harrow, we have it so that the, the, the air lines that are distributing the seed are between where our corn rows are going to grow. And so the, the, the rye is being broadcast or seeded and incorporated right here uh, in the middle. And then we came back 45 days later, 60 days later, and there's a little bit of a ridge here yet from where we put our fertilizer in. Um, and you can see that's an open, an open strip there. And this is where we're gonna plant the corn is right here. And so what we've done is, is uh, we've just tried to move the rye away from the corn a little bit to give the corn, um, it just gives us a, a little bit bigger window or a little bit of flexibility uh, that we don't have to be there that day to terminate, that we've got a little bit of flexibility between when we plant the corn and when we try to terminate it. Because we'll actually try to plant all of our corn into green rye uh, and then terminate it after planting. Um, and this just gives us a little bit more flexibility in that. Um, before, what we had done is we would have drilled at an angle, like a 30 or 40 degree angle to the direction of our, of our corn row. And that worked okay, but what we noticed is, is depending upon how much growth we got in our rye, it made it a little bit hard for our strip till machine to terminate it as well as we wanted. And it just didn't quite give us as wide of a strip as we would have liked. And so uh, we could come back and plant on that strip, but then the rye would actually start to grow over the row and start shading that row. And you know, as that corn seedling would come up, it would sense that right away. And we just didn't want to have any yield effect. So with this, we've been able to move the rye just a little bit further away from the corn plant. We're, we're giving it like a 15 inch corridor. I call it a solar corridor where the corn can start growing and then we've got our rye growing in between the rows. What we're gonna do now is take a look here. This is, this is the end rows of the field. We're just gonna do a little bit of digging to see what things look like. Uh, show you guys what we're checking when we're getting the planter started. Uh, so just coming on down here in the middle of the row. There's a lot of residue in here because our rye was six foot tall a year ago in the soybeans. So there's a lot of rye residue from last year plus all the soybean residue. So we have row cleaners that are brushing that stuff aside. No need to get too terribly aggressive because we're planting the corn a little bit over two inches deep. So the disc openers are able to push it through there. So I'm gonna try and find the furrow here. Let's see, break that open. You can see we've got a nice crumbly sidewall of our seed trench. Ideally, we'd be able to get that crumbled a little bit more than that, but it still looks okay. And then, so we just dig down in here 
Oh, I just dug that corn seed out. So you can dig down in there and uh, put your pliers, pliers across it, stick your finger on it. You see we're planting at the second knuckle right here is about how deep it is. That's right about where you want your corn to be uh, depth wise. It's about two inches. So that's all we're doing. Soil's nice and warm today. It's about 94 degrees, so we're having a real good time out here in the sun. Uh, but yeah, this corn should be up and out of the ground in no time, so it's uh, gonna be off to a good start with the warm temps we've got.